Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. This video is on message authentication, particularly for the digital ham radio apps. And uh, uh, it's how to uh, showing you a tool that is out there to validate a user. In other words, um, anybody can be pretend they're somebody by taking someone else's call sign. How do you know, for example, that uh, Gunny uh, KO4BIA, you know, is really transmitting or someone's just using his call sign? So this is a way to challenge and make sure that you can find out that that person truly is who they claim to be. So this is episode 40. And if you are getting any value from these videos, again, I thank you for those who hit the like and the subscribe button. And again, a shout out to all of you who have been uh, putting a lot of comments down and uh, praying for my health. I thank you so much for that. It means a lot to me. So today I'm going to go over, you know, what is the, the message authentication app? Why use it? And when do you use it? Uh, high level overview, setup instructions. Now, it's pretty simple to set up, except if you're not computer savvy and you know where the config file is in the application, you're going to want to watch this because I make it really simple. And anybody who's not computer literate should be able to do the setup pretty easily on there. And I'll actually get into a summary. So what is this message auth authentication app? It looks like this, and this is from Joe Lyman, KF7MIX. Um, this is version nine, so this is like, I think the fourth iteration of it, and it's pretty solid. We've been doing a lot of testing on it, and we really like it. Um, he also did JSA Spotter, which um, I did a video on that, and it's in the link in the description below. But simply, it's, it's just basically an authentication app with no encoding, no encrypting, and the message is not obscure. And it works using the cyclic redundancy check. And that's what is known as a CRC code. And this, it will generate it in the message. Uh, it'd be, it would be at the end here, but you don't put it in the message. And I don't, I'll get into all of that later. But it is generated, and this is where the CRC code goes. What it does, it uses keys to keep both sides secure. And then here is keys with a drop down. And you can have, could create as many keys as you want. Or in the next few slides, I'll show you how. He has a tool up here that can generate uh, random keys, uh, which is uh, amazing. It saves you a lot of work of trying to come up with them. And, but both parties must have the same key and using it at the same time in order for the authentication to work. And if those who really like the technical details on you know, how he does the secure hashing algorithms to generate it, uh, check out his website. So why and when to use it? Well, uh, trying to validate an operator who sent a message. Listen, we live in a world that's becoming less and less honest and trustworthy. And so you're going to want to authenticate operators and you want to make sure the surety of a valid message. So you want to challenge a user at times, or it could be for like, a, I'll get in here and do a net check-in, but challenge a user. We, people in just a couple months ago when he was developing this, one of our own group members found somebody using his call sign. And I uh, wanted to know what was going on. And this one that piqued our interest and said, oh, okay, it's starting to happen. Is there a way we can do it? We're trying to come up with our own way of doing it. But Joe developed a perfect app that allows us now to challenge the user and say, hey, we don't think that's you. Uh, challenge, we challenge you, prove that it is you. We use this app to do it. And what we're finding is some of the non-licensed hams are grabbing call signs that they're hearing over the radio. Uh, net check-ins this is a great way to do it. Anyone can use your call sign, especially when you get into these large nets. And again, I'll walk you through a process on this, but um, it's not as often today, but let me ask you going forward, what do you think this is going to become more of a problem? And I think the answer is yes. Now, there are two parts to the app. There's part one, and this is where you sign and create the message. And part two is when you're going to validate or respond to the challenge. And the, the key thing is that both parties have the same key. Now you could have multiple keys in the dropdown, but the, the, the same key has to be used at the same time. Not that it's included in the dropdown list, but it has to be included at the same time. So when you're using JS8, which works really great from all of this in here, 
Uh, you create, you know, you, you, again, you have the target station, you have the source station, and I'll get into that more on here. But essentially, it's going to do this. When you sign a message, it's going to create down here. And this is auto copied to the clipboard. So I just go to JS8 and hit Control-V in the message line. So it auto copies to it, and then I just hit Enter, and off it goes. So when we're looking at on the validating side, it's going to tell me uh, on the back side, if, if, if I sent this, for example, I'm sending this to Joe, Joe is going to do his validation and he's going to either get a pass fail on it. So this one passes. So Joe knows that MJ here is really sending this message. Joe built in a great tool within the app and it can actually randomly generate the keys for you. And so uh, for our group, we chose to generate 12, 40 ordered. And this is a, a list. If, if I would click it again a second time, it'd be a completely different list of numbers that go in there because they're randomly generated every time you uh, uh, request it to generate a, a set of keys. And make sure that you don't send this over the air, but post it to uh, like a OneDrive or send it known emails to people within the group. And again, yeah, everyone must share the same correct key. But that can get confusing when you have a large dropdown. So they came up with a way to make it simple. And again, that's what the name of this channel is, Ham Radio Made Simple. So uh, Pam in our group, uh, KJ7VPT, suggested that the beginning of each key, can, can we have like a one for January, February, March, and you know, like 10 is October, November, December. So we know that for, for February, this is the one we use. And for March, this is the one we use. So there's one for each month. And so that uh, makes it simple and not as complicated as to which key you're going to use and when are you going to change them. Uh, some people said, okay, we don't want just, you know, for one for a month, we want to change the key each day. Well, that's an option too. You can generate 31 keys and you can either have 21 alphanumeric numbers, alpha, you know, or you could have up to 40 within your key. But it would go one through 31 for each day. So he gives you a lot of options in the way to do this. And I'll show you how to, once you generate these keys, how to copy and paste that in the config file within the app itself in order for this to appear in the dropdown that you see. And again, uh, so the, the, the sender selects the correct key. And again, the person validating must use the same key also. And that's why it's nice to have one per day or one per month and with the coding built into the key itself. Let's go over two examples on how this can be used. Let's say we have a weekly net check-in and everyone's required to use a tool like this. So I am uh, KW3, KW, I'm doing the net check-in with nothing to report and the net operator is Gunny KO4 BIA. I send it off to him, he will validate this since we're on the, the, the same keys, it, it, will, it will show that uh, MJ is really here and at the same time he checked in with nothing to report. So it's a great way to not only authenticate, but to check in. Okay, let's look at the second uh, way of doing this here. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, uh, Gunny and I are just talking and he's not sure that I am who I am because what I'm saying doesn't sound right. So he, he challenges me to an authentication. And so then what I'm supposed to do is, you know, again, on the source station, I'm gonna show that I am who I am to the target station, Gunny, and instead of put message net check in, I'd probably put uh, MJ um, validating. And then I would, you know, sign the message, get the day code and do like I normally would do, send this over to JS8. Well, on the back side of it, he's going to validate it. And because we have the same keys and he knows the process, he will show, okay, uh, MJ is who he is saying who you are. So not only can you use this for net check ins, but you can challenge somebody along the way to, uh, in your group of friends that you have. Uh, that you know to, to make sure that they can validate. Now, you, you can't ask someone to validate that you don't know when you met them for the first time because they may not have the app and they may not have, they won't have the same key. But this is people that you constantly are working with on a regular basis. And especially when you're dealing with important messages that you want to validate the message as well as the user on here. So again, responding to a challenge to prove who they are. But on the back end and validating the message, for example, if I want to do this, uh, I make sure I check the validate tab. So now I'm on that section of the of the app. 
Um, I recommend when you're validating, the best practice is to use a single line only instead of trying to fill in the target station, the source station. Easiest way to do it is click the single line button, uh, cut and paste the message from JS8 and stick it right in the message line, which is right here that you see right in here. Just cut and paste that and I'll show you that again in the next slide. Uh, the key must be the same in the drop down. You're going to create um, a, a, a three alphanumeric code that's going to go into CRC code. Just be aware, the, the zero and the O are different and it can be confusing. The zero is going to look like this, the O is going to be more rounder. Because I come across that and I can't tell the difference, but I did figure it out. So hopefully that tip will save you some uh, aggravation. And so in here we put the CRC code in. And all we have to do is to, the date code was optional, which you see in here, 218 at 1346. And uh, hit the validate and it passed, obviously. So let's do an, uh, an example for JS8. And so here is a message I created and I added the date code and I signed it. And I went ahead and auto copied it and sent it off to in JSA to uh, Gunny. Gunny gets this on his end. So this is his received message in here. And what he's going to do, he's going to, again, now he's going to go to the, to the validate tab. I did the sign. He's doing the validate tab. He's going to click on the single sign. He's going to cut and paste from right in here, the KO4 BIA right in here. And everything up to this point, these last three, and that's, S0, uh, S01, not a zero, S01, which is your CRC code at the very end. So he's going to cut and paste it, put the CRC code in, hit the validate, and it's going to pass. So again, the, the last part in here is the CRC code. This is the date, um, date code that it's optional. You don't have to do it. You, if you don't put that in, this won't show up. But if you do the date code, you have to include that in the message up in here. So pretty simple, and it passed. Quickly, let's just kind of do a little deeper dive on the CR signature section, which is down here after you've created a signed message. If you blow that up, you can look at it in here, and here's the auto copy line. If it didn't do it, just highlight and cut and paste uh, that line and put it into the message section of the app that you're using in there. Again, there's the date code, and there's the three. Alpha numeric is your CRC code, and it shows in two locations. So we showed you can use it on JS8, for example. It's pretty simple. Cut and paste the message, and uh, off it goes. Pretty easy. And uh, the other thing is it can be used on FL Digi, and we tested this. Steve KE2KN came up with a way of when you auto copy it into the clipboard. There's a best practice technique when you're sending the message, and essentially what you want to do is be just instead of straight cut and paste, you want to go enter enter to create two spaces. Then you enter the, uh, you know, paste in the call sign, hit enter for return. Then you're going to want to do the caret, which is the, it's, it's the note that is above the six key on the keyboard and with the R for return. And then next, what you're going to want to do is uh, uh, put in more enter, enter, and then hit the transmit button, which is somewhere over here to do it. So space, space, type it in, return it around, type in the caret and the R and then enter, enter. Well, essentially what this is going to do is this is basically um, uh, going to prevent a lot of garbage from getting caught up into the message. Uh, and oh, by the way, when you're using FL Digi, a lot of people forget you got to be on the same offset, same frequency, and obviously can test the like 4250 if you're using it. But a lot of people are not on the same offset, and there's a that's a problem. So just FYI, so you don't figure out why it's not working. But if you now look at this, um, and, and this is the message, instead of see how this garbage comes in, it spaced it. There's a pause and there's nothing around it. So it de clearly delineates that message line from the garbage that's typical in FL Digi uh, under the decoding uh, of the messages and whatever is happening in it. So you're going to cut and paste. And, you know, this is, remember the CRC code, you leave that alone. You don't want to put that in, but you're going to go validate message, single line, Type it in. Uh, you're going to put the CRC code in, hit validate, um, and off you go. And again, this eliminates all of the garbage that clutters up the screen. So hopefully that makes sense. So enter, enter, cut the message, uh, enter, put the carrot, si si uh, carrot symbol with the R, enter, enter, and then, then hit the transmission. 
to set this thing up, you, it's, you know, for me, I always take the application and I put it on my C drive under JS8 Spotter. And this is the uh, version nine of it. Here's the config file. There's two things. Before you do that, if you want an, uh, uh, a shortcut on it, you have to take the application right here, the application, uh, right mouse click once it's highlighted and hit create shortcut and drag it onto the desktop. So simple if you want to create the, uh, the, sh the shortcut, because I don't think it comes included in it. But um, you've, hopefully you've done that enough on JSH Spotter and some of the other apps is to create the shortcut. It's off the application app uh, on doing it. So on the CFG, the config file in here, make sure it's highlighted. And then what you want to do is open it. And this is going to pull up like this. So the top one is your theme. Light is the light, dark is the dark. So if you don't want the light, erase it and just type in dark. If you uh, next is going to be your call sign, put it in caps. So like mine's KW three KW, and then just cut and paste all the keys right underneath it, and off you go. So how to and and uh, add the keys that you generated. So remember we went to tools and we created uh, a whole set of generated keys. Well, Control A is going to copy all, and Control C or uh, Control A is going to select all, and Control C is going to copy all. And that's all you have to do on that. And then just go over into underneath the line here, underneath your call sign, uh, put the cursor and hit Control V, which is paste or right mouse click and paste. So generate, copy, select all, paste right underneath your call sign and hit the save under here file. There's a save uh, option, hit the save and then off you go. And uh, by the way, that's the group practice key. So if someone's wondering why is that so simple? Well, that's what we use just to practice to get this going. So where do you go to download the app? Well, the link is in the description below, but this is uh, KF7MIX, uh, Joe Lyman. Uh, this is his website, and this is version 9 at the time of the recording of this video. And his website is outstanding. It has uh, uh, manuals, has great videos, instructions, and listen, the guy will respond to your questions within 24 hours. He's, he's amazing the work that he has done. He's also put out JSA Spotter, and if you the menu, you can take a look at it. Again, I, it's something if you're not if you're using JSA Call, you have to be using JSA Spotter. It's a great companion tool. So summary: If you want to validate uh, for uh, a way of validating ham radio operators on digital apps, this is the way to go. I mean, it works on JSA Call, uh, FL Digi, Bar AC. It doesn't need, uh, it's not determined by the app. It's just basically, can you get the message transmitted where someone can then put it into the validate section of the app and then go back and forth. So it's great. And if you haven't seen his JS8 Spotter uh, application, I did a video um, that's in the link below. Watch that again. It's a must companion tool for JSA call. So this is MJ with Ham Radio Made Simple, call sign KW3KW, thanking you for hitting the like the subscribe and your encouraging comments. I really appreciate it. So until next time, this is MJ out.